Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we bring you the latest in independent films that are currently out there so people can check them out. Uh, and we are here today to talk about uh, Pubel of Chimney Town. And we have uh, wonderful Misty Lee and Antonio Raul Corbo here. How are you? Hello, hello. Good. Very happy to be here. Yes. Right on. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, the, poop, the Poopel of Chimney Town? You want to take this one, Antonio? Um, I, I took the last one. You can take this one first. Okay. <laughs> so Poopel of Chimney Town is the story of a young lad who makes his first friend and they go on an adventure because somebody has a vision and an idea. And it's the way that the town it, it changes around them as a result of their friendship and their activities. Right on. Tell me the most uh, wonderful thing that you enjoyed about voicing your character. Oh, you go well, first. There's a lot. Um, first off, being a part of this amazing film that I'm, I'm so honored to be, to be picked from essentially because um, what I got from this is um, none of us really auditioned. So just, just the, the fact that they, they found us and that they, they picked us all was also amazing. The vibrant colors are beautiful. The animation's awesome. The original um, cast for the Japanese version is, is amazing. Their, their voice works insanely good. And I'm so happy to be a part of this, this whole universe. Right on. How about you, Misty? Uh, this this film is incredible, and I did not see the script ahead of time, so I got to experience everything that Lola goes through in real time. And she has a lot of love, and everything that she does is it, it's motivated by love. Her acceptance, her it, all of the things that she does, and it it was just incredibly inspiring to get to experience that page by page, if you will. So I, I just I have nothing but love and respect for this single, you know, this this mom who's ostensibly acting as a single mom at this point when we when we meet everybody, you find that pretty quick. And she wants to make sure that her son is OK and she's doing her best to deal with her own issues because she is incapacitated while doing while making sure that her little guy is going to grow and be fulfilled. Very good. So. Um, Antonio, tell me a little bit about your time in the booth while you're uh, recording this. And uh, how many other recordings have you done? Have you done a lot of voiceover and dubbing before? Or is this your first one, second one, third one? How are you doing with that? So this is my first like real like big dubbing where I spent like a lot of time on it. I've done like past ADR and stuff like that. But like this is like my first really big and crazy one. Um, I do have past voiceover work. I don't know how many, but... I do have past voiceover work since I was probably around seven ish. So the, my time in the booth was amazing. I mean, Jamie is awesome. An amazing guy. Um, Jeff's also cool. He's one of our producers and amazing people. We have an amazing team and I'm so happy to be a part of this. Um, I, the whole time I was in there was really a learning experience because I'm not used to doing this type of dubbing. It's, it's very much so different than doing um, like, more so background ADR because most of the time you can't really see the lips but for this one you really have to match it up perfectly and I think when I did it it was like a form of like fulfillment like I'm like oh I did it I got it down so and that that never got old so did you, feel, you can see I'm, I'm yeah. rambling I'm talking really quick <laughs> no you're, you're good you're good I, I I wanted to ask about uh since this film is has a lot of fantasy and a lot of whimsy in it while you were doing your recordings of your characters did you feel like there was almost like a magical sense while you were looking at your character to, uh, when you were being able to to portray this role and to put in the inflections in the dialogue and then follow each of the sequences and acts and did you, did you also feel like you were seeing a little magic going on i i definitely did it was it, it was insanely amazing just how how it felt like it felt crazy good um the magic that you see when when the sound lines up with with the the video on screen and it just it feels right and then sometimes when they play it back you can kind of see like the unedited version and then you're kind of realizing that the world's more so coming to life and just seeing all the lights combined with your voice and the emotion that you're putting in and knowing that it's paying off and it, it's really awesome Nice. How about you, Misty? How was your experience in the booth for uh, Poop Hell of Chimney Town? I, my experience in the booth was here at home. If you can see behind me, I've got this big voiceover booth here in my office, and that's where I did my part. So they pumped 
uh, the original animation, which is incredible and beautiful and tells a story in and of itself uh, into a computer system that's in my booth. And so I was watching it on one monitor and then we would match the lip flaps into the dub. And I was immediately struck by the images. The images are gorgeous. The art is gorgeous. The timing is incredible. And even some of the artistic choices, like there's a there's an 8-bit homage in the near the beginning of the show where they are almost look like they're in Donkey Kong. And it's just, there are so many different styles. And sometimes the water looks like it was done in CGI. And then you've got these beautiful sparkling rainbow crystals down in a cavern. And it's just absolute magic. Yes, is the answer to your question. There was magic <laughs> upon magic upon magic upon magic from the fact that we were just chosen for this project to the fact that our voices all mixed together to the fact that we were able to make it match these incredible images to the images that we were given, which are just like, and then on top of all of that, this incredible, important story. Yes, it is magic and yeah. alchemy. Well, since since you have uh, the booth already in your studio in the back, where where literally the magic happens while you're doing <laughs> the recordings and voiceover, yeah. um, I, do you how? Well, I guess we could say about how often is is that used? Do you do all different types of voiceovers? Mm -hmm. I know that the home booth is a uh, like a booming industry. I have a couple friends and colleagues that have built their own and then do a lot of voice work in those types of booths. So, mm -hmm. have you really seen a lot of use out of that? Uh, and then yeah. you know, working on a variety of different projects. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've done everything from triple uh, A video games to to, you know, very small one liners in, you know, just some somebody's pet project. Uh, the nice thing is it becomes a selling point because it's a tool that I have here and it's something that I can offer. I will say, though, that there is nothing like working with an engineer whose professional ears are on your stuff. So all you have to do is act so you don't have to sit there and ride your gain. You know, oh, I'm going to shout. So I need to turn this down or I'm going to, you know, like thinking about all that technical stuff is mm -hmm. it, to have an expert on hand. It, the one thing that it has really done for me is made me so grateful to a good engineer because it just makes me love and appreciate them all the more. But yes, I do book projects because I own that thing. Because yeah. they, and, and also in the middle of a pandemic, I don't say this often, but I have multiple sclerosis. And so I don't go out unless I want to. And the ability to be able to record projects like World of Warcraft from home, they have experts that help me figure it out. And I got to do this stuff from the house and I didn't have to worry about, because we recorded this in the middle of a pandemic. And it, I would not be able to tell this beautiful story if I didn't have this, um, tool at my disposal. Wow. Uh, yeah. Thank thank you for, for being so open and candid sure. uh, ab about what what goes on uh, working yeah. from home and yeah, doing and it's purple. Doing. Remember I told you, Antonio, look, oh, it's purple. See? It's purple on the inside. Yes. All right. <laughs> Matches the shirt. Yeah. Nice look right there. Oh, that's in one of his um, colors. He loves the purple. And I said, my I book like is that. purple. <laughs> do you are, are, have you built are, are you going to build a booth or looking to get a booth in home Antonio or do you already have one or I actually do it's it's in my room I'm in my mom's room right now because it's oh, just okay. a bit bigger but so I have two closets where I live so one I keep all my clothes and the other I transformed into a booth that I just opened my door and I walk into so That's what a lot so of people are cool. doing yeah right on and okay. it works just so, fine uh, mm -hmm. For the voiceover community, uh, what words of wisdom would you like to give to uh, so that they will have a fruitful career in voiceover, dubbing, and then obtaining projects like this one, which we're talking about, Propel of Chimney Town? What would you like to say to that whole community, the, the thing that they need most besides a booth? Mm -hmm. No, they don't need it. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they don't need it. They don't it, need it. Helps, it. But, but it helps yeah. sell you. Sure, sure. Antonio, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Um, Sure, I'll go first. Um. I think going off the, the booth thing, when I was like five to maybe 10, I was using my mom's phone and I, I wasn't even like having like a fully mic. I was using the Apple mic from like the iPhone 10 and that was working just fine. So you don't need like a crazy expensive setup unless it says that you're going to be doing it from home, then you might need to invest in that. But I think definitely you, you need to love entertainment because if you're just doing it for fame or money, then it's not really going to be good in the long run or even good for your mental health in general and honestly when I was younger um I wasn't I was kind of shy honestly when I was doing voiceover I was kind of just be like this and I'd be like ah, and it wouldn't come out well and then I kind of just realized over the years that 
just be yourself, be crazy, because if you're playing this anxious, crazy kid with a dream that's going to do some crazy stuff in the movie that I'm not going to spoil, you're not going to be like this, you're going to be like that. And so be yourself, be crazy, love the arts, love what you do, and be you, be you, just be you. That's all you need uh-huh. to do. Awesome. And that's exactly what I was going to say, is that I think that we are, we hear so frequently, no, and we hear it no matter what vocation you work in, whether you sell insurance and you're calling people on the phone, you hear no. If you're if you're doing something else, a, a doctor hears no. You have to operate within the constraints of this hospital. And one of the things that I have learned over the past several years is to just not be or not try to be what everybody else thinks, to do what feels comfortable and right. Because at the end of the day, there's nobody like you. And I know that it sounds cliche to say that, but the bottom line is you're enough and you have everything you need at your disposal because you have your life experience. You have the way you laugh and the things that make you laugh. You have the songs you love. You have all of the the way that you bolster a friend is gonna bring a unique, specifically to voiceover, it's gonna bring a unique read to that commercial. And it, you, you're going to bring stuff to the microphone just because of who you are that is going to make for the perfect fit for some project somewhere. So if you love it, keep going. And as Antonio said, be more you. Always be you. Because there's going to be a perfect fit for you somewhere. That is, that is a home run. That is... Uh, it's that true. Is, that, that dropped the mic. I Literally, I, that's... That, that's the best way that you can put it. And uh, I appreciate the, those, those words of wisdom from both of you. And I'd like to congratulate you on the propeller of Chimney Town, which we're happy to uh, have talked about today. And I know that you just screened at the Art is Film uh, Film Festival. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in closing, is there anything you'd like to say to the Art is Film Festival? And how was your experience while you were able to see it on the big screen <gasps> at an in-person live so event? Awesome. It was so great. Right. And and the, the that... The Artist Film Festival in particular was incredibly welcoming, but also very discriminate, and meaning that they didn't just let anybody in. Every single thing that they brought to their festival goers was fantastic. And so it was an incredible privilege to be included in that and to be part of that because what a community and what an amazing achievement for the, the production team. And it was just a joy to be there. So thank you for treating us so well. Thank you for being magic to the festival. And thank you for making Pupel a part of it. The animation is film festival. So animation, animation is film festival. Is film festival. Yes. I don't know what I said, but it's animation about. is film festival. Okay. When it's live, sometimes we flub it, but then we go back and correct it. And say, take two. An- take two. Animation, animation is, is film, film festival. festival. <laughs> well, I'm sure that <laughs> they were say? proud to screen the film. Uh, and I know that I've heard wonderful things about it. And I want to thank you so much for your time, oh, Misty man. Lee and Antonio Raul Corbo, for talking to me today about the Poopel of Chimney Town. So again, thank you for coming on The Breeze, and we hope that our audiences are able to check out our next interview coming right up. 